Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is Submesetric Space Infection. Submesetric Space Infection, it is one of the masticatory space. Uh, we have discussed in detail about masticatory space in my previous video. Now, we are gonna see about the submesetric space infection. Let's see the gist of the submesetric space infection. In this video, we are going to discuss about boundaries of submesetric space infection and then the contents of submesetric space infection and then the teeth involved in the submesetric space infection and what are the sources of infection. Next, the neighboring spaces of the submesetric space and then the clinical features of submesetric space infection and next comes the treatment of submesetric space infection. Submesetric space, it is one of the masticatory space. There are five masticatory spaces we have already discussed in the previous video. Check out my previous video. Now let's move on to the topic. Coming to the boundaries of submesetric space, have a look at this diagram. This will be your peruted gland. The same diagram you have saw for the pterygomandibular space infection also. So it will be very easy for you. And this will be the medial pterygoid. Yeah, it will be a medial pterygoid muscle. And this will be your masseter muscle. This will be your masseter muscle. And this is the ramus of mandible. Alright. And this will be your pterygomandibular raffae. Okay. Now, where is the submesetric space? Previously, we have saw pterygomandibular space. Here will be your, this space is the, this space is the pterygomandibular space. Alright. This is the pterygomandibular space. And where will be your submesetric space? This is the submesetric space. This blue color, what I have marked, will be your submesetric space. This will be your submesetric space. Okay. This will be your submesetric space, and this will be your masseter, and here you'll have your ramus of mandible. Okay. Now, what you have anteriorly, anteriorly, what you can see. Anteriorly, you can see the anterior border of masseter muscle. Okay. Anteriorly, this is your anterior part. Anteriorly, you have the anterior border of masseter muscle. Anterior border of masseter muscle. Okay. And posteriorly, what do you have? Posteriorly, you have this parotid gland. Posteriorly will be your parotid gland. Now, what you have medially, this is the space and this is the medial side. Alright, this is the medial side and this will be your lateral side. Now, what you have medially, medially you have the lateral surface of ramus of mandible. This is your medial surface of ramus of mandible. And this will be your lateral surface of ramus of mandible. Now this is the space. Where you have medially will be your lateral surface of ramus of mandible. Alright. Just have a look at here. This will be your masseter muscle and this will be your ramus of mandible. 
this is the submasthetic space. This is the submasthetic space. And this is the medial surface of ramus of mandible. And this is the lateral surface of ramus of mandible. Now, the submasthetic space medially it has this one. That is the lateral surface of ramus of mandible. Alright now. Okay. What do you have laterally? This is the lateral. Laterally what do you have? The masseter muscle. Laterally you have masseter muscle. And next moving on to superior and inferior side. Superiorly what do you have? Superiorly you will be having the zygomatic arch. Am I right? Superiorly it will be your zygomatic arch. And inferiorly this will be your masseter and uh, this will be your masseter position. This will be your inferior border of mandible. You have to write inferiorly what you have to write? That is the inferior border of mandible. Inferior border of mandible. You can remember like this. That inferior, inferior, same. The same you have saw in pterygomandibulite Terigo mandibular space infection also. Isn't it? It's just simple. Anteriorly what you have? Anterior is this one. That is the anterior border of masseter muscle. And posteriorly submasseter space. Posterior side you have the parotid gland. Medially. Medially what you have? That is this one. The lateral surface of ramus of mandible. And what do you have laterally? Laterally is this one. You have the masseter muscle. Superiorly. Superiorly you will be having the zygomatic arch. And inferior will be your inferior border of mandible. Alright now. These are the boundaries of submasseteric space. This is very simple. You just remember this diagram. What are the contents now? Contents of submasseteric space is simple. That is masseteric artery and masseteric vein. Okay, masseteric artery and masseteric vein. These are the two contents of the submasseteric space. We have covered about the boundaries of submasseteric space and what are the contents of the submasseteric space. Now let's move on to the teeth involved in the submasseteric space infection. What are the teeth involved? It will be your mandibular third molar. Alright, it will be your mandibular third molar. That is the teeth involved. Next, coming to the source of infection. What are the source of infection? Source of the infection is maybe due to the pericoronitis. Pericoronitis of vertical or distoangular mandibular third molars. Alright. So yeah, source of infection may be due to the pericoronitis of Vertical or distoangular mandibular third molars. This is the source of infection of the submasseteric space infection. Now let's move on to the neighboring spaces of submasseteric space. Neighboring spaces includes just you have to remember the masticatory spaces what we have discussed previously. That is it will be your Two temporals, superficial temporal space and then will be your deep temporal, superficial temporal, deep temporal space and infratemporal space. And will be your pterygomandibular space. Next will be your buccal 
little space. Alright? These are the neighboring spaces. You first remember the two temporal, that is that is the three temporal, that is the superficial temporal, deep temporal and infratemporal. And then pterygo mandibular space. These are the masticatory spaces, right? And next will be your buccal space. Okay? These are the neighboring spaces of submesatric space. Let's see what are the clinical features of submesatric space. That is, there will be swelling. Where will be the swelling? Swelling over the angle of mandible. Swelling over the angle of mandible. Alright. And you will be having Christmas. And there will be throbbing pain. There will be throbbing pain. And next will be your pain and tenderness over the ramus. Pain and tenderness. There will be pain and tenderness over mandibular ramus. Mandibular ramus. Alright. Let's move on to the treatment of submasetric space infection. That will be your incision and drainage. The most common treatment that is the incision and drainage. Here a vertical incision is made. Where you have to do the vertical incision that is you have to do on the external oblique line. You have to do on the external external oblique line of mandible all right vertical incision is made on the external oblique line of mandible and then the drain is placed pus is evacuated and sutured this is the treatment of submesetric space infection Let's have a quick recall of what we have covered in this video. The boundaries of submesetric space infection and then the contents of submesetric space infection and what are the teeth involved and the source of infection of the submesetric space infection and finally the clinical features and treatment of the submesetric space infection. That's it about submesetric space infection guys. If you like the video, hit the like button, share my video and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you.